Lyme Regis. This is the, uh, the town that I grew up in and it was out there on those beaches that I got my love for fossils and geology and nature and wildlife. And the reason why the town is so famous for all those things is because of landslides, because the cliffs are eroding by the sea. And that begs the question, erosion, is it good or bad for the town? But if you're going to understand a landslide, you need to know the geology, you need to know the rock mechanics, you need to know the soil mechanics and how soft rocks deform. You know, are they brittle, are, are they ductile? Can you push them about like plasticine or do they break? That sort of question. You, but you need to know what rainfall does, what water pressures are, you, you, you know, and so on. Would you be able to briefly outline how a landslide slip occurs? There are three things about a landslide. One is the weight on the back, the other is support at the toe, and the other is water pressure in the middle. And that all applies to the strength of the hill. You know, so um, uh, the way they work is, is whether you are applying a stress to the hillside that is greater than the strength of the hill can withstand. You know, so if I come and push you, I'm bigger than you and I'm likely to knock you over. Right? Even though you resist. I mean, you can dig your feet in like a rugby front row forward, but I'm gonna take you because the stress is bigger than the resistance. So a landslide is all about that. And how key have they been to shaping this coastline? Absolutely. Here, right here, oh, absolute. No, no, this is landslide mecca. This is why I spent my life down here working. Some of the best landslides anywhere in Europe. Landsliding is only a problem where um, it's interacting with um, houses and infrastructure and where it's going to cause a problem, for example, houses falling off the edge of the cliff. So I came back from school that day and uh, the house was creaking and groaning and the whole place had moved about five inches but it was enough to bring the ceilings down and the floors up. So the house was wrecked completely. It must have been uh, quite emotional and a, quite a big deal to see your house collapse. My mother's hair went white over the... Uh, over the next few years. You couldn't insure against landslides in those days, you can now. It was called an act of God. So they were left completely finished by it. The house had to be sort of brought down manually because uh, it was still completely standing, although wrecked. Well, I think over the last 20 years, we've had something around £60 million spent on Lyme Regis, which, considering the size of the community, is an awful lot of money. I mean, I think, you know, even a project of this size, at the end of the day, it's, uh, a, it slows things down uh, as best it can, but at the, at the end of the day, it's Mother Nature. <laughs> Who's going to win? It's not good for, for the perhaps the future of the town because if, if there was a major slip like there has been in the past then obviously that would, that would make a massive difference to people's confidence in, in uh, investing in local businesses and, and in buying properties here. Do you think um, fossil hunting is one of the main attractions to Lyme? Yeah, definitely it's uh, I, you know, for people, when they're coming to Lyme Regis, they're coming for fossil hunting. Uh, they're coming. Lots of them are walking the southwest coast path. And again, there's there's an example of something that coastal erosion is affecting quite a lot. We've had the, the path from here to Seaton uh, was closed in portion for quite a long part of last summer and been 
re-diverted. Uh, the path from here to Charmouth now goes across the golf course and down the main road uh, rather than its original original pathway. Um, but yeah, fossil hunting's always always going to be uh, classically of interest and we, we actually get quite a lot of international visitors uh, who come here um, looking for fossils. Do you feel there are any benefits to landslides in the local area? Yeah, there are lots of benefits. Obviously it's a great benefit to me um, to have landslides because we have all these amazing fossils that we find here and without the landslides we simply wouldn't discover them. That's not to suggest that people go climbing the cliffs, it's a very very silly thing to do, it's really dangerous. Lots of really sticky mud where you can get stuck, lots of rocks falling. But without the landslides coming down and the sea washing those fossils out of the rocks then we wouldn't discover all these amazing things. So we get some of the most amazing fossils in the world found here. What are the positive and negative effects of the landslip on wildlife in the surrounding area? One of the most obvious effects of the landslip is that the whole of the coast between Sidmouth and West Bay is highly unstable, which creates wonderful habitats for small mini-beasts, and the charity Bug Life gets very excited about some of the obscure animals that are to be found here. There's a little tiger beetle which is limited to this area. And there are about a hundred species that are nationally scarce and make use of the landslip and the soft muds where they can burrow and sunbathe. Given that tourism is the one of the, if not the biggest income factor for Lyme Regis, do you feel it has an overall positive effect? I think we have positive and negative effects. Um, we had some very big landslides back at Christmas, which drew in somewhere between about 500 to 1,000 people within a couple of hours. And it was very, very high tide, very stormy conditions, and we had people swimming, fully clothed with backpacks on, around the landslips, trying to find fossils because they saw landslide on the news, you can find fossils, and that to them was, I'm going to go there and find all this treasure and maybe make millions out of it. Who knows what they were thinking? They quite clearly didn't have a clue. So I think fossil hunting in some ways can have a negative effect, but if people are educated, if people come and visit the Heritage Centre, the Lyme Regis Museum, places along the coastline where you can get you know, good information about how to go about doing things correctly on our beaches, then it can have a very positive effect. And as you said, it's fossil hunting here is one of our biggest sources of income. Would you say the coast is very difficult to manage? That's very difficult. It's manage. dynamic. Very difficult. There are one or two things you could say instantly. Dominant waves coming from southwest west. The big waves. The ones that are going to do the damage, are going to move the shingle. Oh, and we haven't talked about that, have we? We haven't talked about what the beach is made of. Now, do you know what a beach is? Uh, well, it's material deposited by waves. It's the build-up over time. Okay. Where, do they, where does the material come from? It comes back from the land. It's a cycle. From the cliff? Yeah. How does it get from the cliff to the beach? Rock falls and landslips. Rock falls, landslips, erosion. So they're key, would you, so would you say they're key, okay. landslips are key to forming the coast then? Yeah, okay, so what is a beach? I mean, we're sitting on a beach, what is it? It's land. Yeah, but is it, it's not really the land, it's not really the sea, is it? It's a store of mucky material that's been ripped off the land and it's been stored here for a while. What's its function? I wouldn't say it has a function. It's just there. Uh, no, it has a function. Tell me what. Try and think into what. Has it got a function? When the sea hits it, what does it do? Uh, it absorbs the sea's energy and protects the land behind. The best answer today. I mean, that's really advanced thinking. What it does, it's a shock absorber. You take all of that sun's energy, which you know you bring through into the wave, and it comes up on a beach, you know, and this little wave runs up the beach, and what happens to all that energy? It drains into the beach, yeah? 
or it moves the beach up and down a bit it does work it uses the energy yeah and what does the beach do it says thanks very much give me another one and another wave comes and it says thanks very much and all that energy the whole energy of the planet dies on the shoreline it's a shock absorber and if it wasn't there we wouldn't be there the land wouldn't be there We're at Gun Cliff, which had some of the oldest sea defences in the town. And as a boy, I can actually remember when the waves used to go crashing over the top of the buildings over there. And in the 1990s, the engineers built a new seawall and put rock armour in front to protect it. And now we have a really strong sea defence to protect this part of the town. been done around the coast in order to protect it, stop landslips from happening? Since the uh, late 1980s there's been a whole range of different schemes which has been put into effect by West Dorset District Council who are the uh, local authority responsible for coast protection around here and we did a, a series of phased schemes So phase two and three of the works to protect Lyme involved the seafront, and here the engineers faced a double problem. The sea would hammer against the old seawall, but also the properties here are built on ancient landslides. So the challenge for the engineers was both to protect the seafront from the ravages of the sea, and also stabilize the slope to uh, protect the properties. So how would how difficult is it to get the balance between man-made defences and natural processes on the coast? It's not at all difficult if you understand the strength of the land, the shock absorber, the energy you're applying and the things that muck it up from up there. If you get those right, then you find the solution. And in Lyme Regis, the solution is that you have landslides coming down and you've got to stop them. So you want to take the water out You've got a sea wall to stop any further cutting away of the toe. Because when you have a landslide, there are three things you don't do to a landslide. You don't put a weight on the back. You don't cut the toe away. Because in one, in one case you're pushing it, and in another you're letting it go. And you don't raise the water pressure inside. So you get the water out. You don't build anything up the top and you put a seawall or a weight at the bottom, a tow weight, to hold it. So here, we did all three. And if you look at the front of Lyme Regis, it's got a lovely tow weight, which is called a beach, and the seawall stops erosion. The whole of that cliff is, is covered in drainage measures and we've stabilised it as well with 2,000 piles dirty great big lumps of concrete like my walking stick you know you drill them in to pin the thing down and give it support and you don't allow any building at the top you don't shift material about either to change the balance you know if you think about it a, a cliff is like a seesaw if you put a weight on the back like that it'll shunt back forward if you take the toe off the weight up here will move it up you know it's, it's quite easy you've got to get the balance somewhere in the middle of the slope, you know, there's, there's a neutral point. This is East Cliff, phase four of the Lyme Regis Protection Works, and what you can see is a massive seawall to defend the base of the cliff. What you can't see is in the slope behind, the huge engineering works to actually completely stabilise that slope. On the other side, though, it's a little bit different. We've still got the seawall, but the landslide is being allowed to move naturally, and that's partly because it's still a very valuable wildlife site, but it also just simply reflects the difficulty of trying to hold the line with a scheme like this against the edge of the largest coastal landslide in Europe, and the junction is always going to be messy.
So in the National Trust opinion, which would you say is more important for the area of Lyme Regis? Protecting the locals' land and livelihood or ensuring that nature takes its course as intended? The bottom line answer to that question is protecting this piece of coastline for the local people. Protecting nature is very important for open coast, but where you've got this level of infrastructure, then we've got no choice. Uh, the answer is we should be protecting those people's livelihoods, their properties, and the infrastructure that services the town. Well, I think over the last 20 years, we've had something around £60 million spent on Lyme Regis, which, considering the size of the community, is an awful lot of money. A lot of that comes from DEFRA and from the uh, European Union, which um, could be interested in the next phase of the project. But, um, yeah, that, that's where it mainly comes from. So would you say the money in Lyme Regis has been, sent, has been spent efficiently and well? I, I have probably a different view than, than, than the council on this. I'm, I'm surprised we've spent this much money on such a small community. I know it's, it's important and it's, it's historical, but the fact that you are protecting um, a part of the coast that will probably disappear in time, I, I have my doubts whether it's money well spent. As far as the tourism and the economy of Dorset is concerned, it probably is worth it. But I don't think we'll ever fully protect it and, and it has a, a finite lifespan. So it's just whether that money is balanced against that lifespan. And do you think it currently is? It's difficult. I've been, been born and bred in Lyme, you know, I, I love the place, but um, I, I have other concerns where that sort of money could be spent. Because where else this money could be spent? Well, there's lots of areas we struggle with, um, particularly in the county council level, with things like adult social care, children's services. Um, so even the money is factored in for this sort of defences, there, there are particular areas where um, people have, have problems. So you say coast fences is quite a big thing, and quite a, it's almost a show-off project for a council that's being prioritised too much? I think when the money was available in the past there, there was no great issue, um, but money, the financial situation the country finds itself in, and the councils in particular find themselves in for the future, we have to, we have to question whether that's um, worth spending that money on these particular areas in the future. What you though have to remember with any kind of human engineered intervention, there's this idea of service life. How long will this last? Because we know that generally speaking, the service life of coast defences of high quality like this have probably got about 60 years. So what you then have to say is, have you made a rod for your own back? Does this mean that in 60 years time, you have to come back or the engineers of the day have to come back and do this all over again? And the likelihood is they will. Finally, the coastal fences have only a 60 year planned life cycle. So what do you think will happen after that? Well, I, 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 I fail to see how we can get more money in in the current financial situation to do any more work in the future. So, and then again, the shoreline management plan talks about managed retreat. So I think at the end of these lives of these defences, it will be a very different line regions we look at. The question of the longevity of the project is, is a good one. Um, as you say, will it last 60, will it last 80, will it last 40? I think uh, only time will, will tell. Um, I mean, obviously we've already seen problems with the, 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 the land that was um, covered with the mesh sheet sort of mesh um, metal work slipping through that. Uh, now, whether or not that was planned for or not, and that was just as the project settled. For myself personally, Half of a 60-year roadmap, a sort of a 30-year roadmap, still works for me because um, I'd like to be retired by then. Um, however, the next question becomes resaleability from a business perspective. You know, if if the project lasts that 60 years, but then there is big issues. Um, obviously, when you were asking earlier about so would we have considered buying the place if if there was more challenges with with erosion? Um, will will the person I want to sell it to? want to buy it if those challenges exist. So yeah, that's a concern from, inter from a sort of 60 year standpoint. People now feel that 
if they bought a property that's a closer to the cliff edge, that the chances are it's not going to disappear over the, over the side in the next you know, 50 years or so. So that, that has helped enormously. It's helped people to be able to insure their properties against subsidence and cliff erosion and that sort of thing, which was an issue before that in, for, for some insurance companies. So the, there's been a lot of positives because of that. This is one of the most difficult engineering, geological, geomorphological problems that I know. Um, and, and because of the team that Keith Cole put together, because of the cooperation of the town, because of the funding from, in the, uh, in the early case, the Minister of Agriculture, but later on, uh, you know, from the Department of the Environment and now the Environment Agency, because of their support and because of the way we were all able to talk about it and because of the way I was able to teach and, you know, we all came together as a team and I think it's worked, I think there's support, I think all those things have worked. And the fact is, 10 years later, the beach is still here. That's never been achieved before at Lyme Ridges. Good scheme. After this week, I think coastal erosion is very good for Lyme because without coastal erosion, Lyme wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't have the Jurassic Coast, it wouldn't have the fossils, it wouldn't have the shops, it wouldn't have the businesses, it wouldn't have the beach. Without it, it really would just be another coastal bit of coast with nothing really there. I've always thought coastal erosion was bad for Lyme Regis, just based on that there's a lot of houses and properties and money behind the sea defences, but as the week's kind of gone on, I've seen that there are benefits, like the fossils being unearthed. Originally I uh, thought coastal erosion was a really bad thing because of the uh, infrastructure and everything at FREP from the erosion itself, but now after speaking to many people with different views, I'm feeling it's more of a positive thing for the town. Well, I didn't think people's opinions were so varied, but there were people who thought erosion was good, there were people who thought erosion was bad, there were some that didn't even care about it whatsoever and thought that more money should just be put into other things. I think one of the interesting things about the project was talking to different people and learning about what their opinions on coastal matters were, because it's really a local thing. And um, yeah, I think it was just really interesting to hear their opinions. I think it's good for Lyme, as it allows the town to be there and the tourism that it brings is great for Lyme, for example the fossils that have been found there. It also allows education for the, uh, the young people in Lyme and helps them be infused by the fossils and geology that it sits upon. I've got a lot more appreciation about how documentaries are made and how difficult it is and also a lot about kind of engineering which I wanted to have a look at and geography. So about how the coast, how to maybe plan engineering works and how to maybe sometimes you've got to work with nature and with what you've got instead of just working against it the whole time. Mm -hmm.